you know, I mentioned that people are probably considering Amazon ads now that it's available to everyone or like, you know, I've tried it a few times. I've actually had one campaign that's done pretty well that I keep renewing, but uh, I know, especially early on, I tried it and I just couldn't spend any money like I wanted to, but I was doing it. Uh, well, why don't I ask you first kind of like, for those who don't have any experience with it, what, how are the Amazon ads working and, and how can we get involved and what are they all about? <laughs> yeah, totally. So, uh, Amazon released their program. It's called Amazon Marketing Services. And basically, if, you, if you've if you already published a book on Amazon Kindle, if you have a Kindle Direct Publishing account, you basically just log into your account and you simply click Promote and Advertise on your book page next to your book. And then on the right-hand side of that page, they'll say, like, create an ad campaign. And when you do that, they'll ask you to create your account with Amazon Marketing Services. Uh, and then you get two options for your ad. So there's sponsored products and there are product display ads. So sponsored products are like ads that you use keywords to target. Um, you know, uh, and so I guess first I should explain kind of like what, like what these ads are. So if you go to any book page on Amazon that's like actually selling copies uh, and just scroll down the page, you'll see a section that says customers who bought this item also bought. And that's like, you know, that's like where Amazon uses data science to find out, you know, um, people who liked you know, the time bound series also liked you know, the Chrono series or whatever, right? And then underneath that, is a, it says sponsored products related to this item. And that's where your ads show up. So that's that's where you're actually paying to get a listing on those book pages on Amazon for your sponsored product ads. And so with sponsored products, you can target um, essentially based on keywords, right? So you can create an ad and, and that basically only targets people who type in, let's say, science fiction or a fantasy novel or a historical romance novel, right? So you can target these keywords that will then have your ad appear um, to those uh, people searching for those kinds of books or related to those kinds of keywords, right? Um, and then product display ads are a little bit different. So the product display ads, the way they work is you're essentially you're, you're targeting interests, right? So you can either target based on interest or by product. So interests are kind of just like, if you've seen Amazon categories, Right, there's like health, fitness, and dieting. Um, and then for um, science fiction, there is, let's see, there's like women's fiction, poetry, literary fiction, genre fiction, right? Um, so they're not very targeted, action and venture. Um, so, but interests are cool. So you can target by interest. So like Amazon will just automatically, you just select, let's say like action and venture, and Amazon will just automatically target your ad to people who have expressed interest in action and venture books on Amazon, right? The other way to target people with product display ads is by product. Um, and this is usually not very useful, but it, it can be sometimes. So what you can do is like, for example, like if you know for sure that like people who read your book would love, uh, or sorry, people who read uh, Harry Potter would love your book, then you can actually go and advertise only to people who are looking at Harry Potter, right? So you can actually select that exact book and have your ad appear only on that one page on Amazon. So those are just kind of the, some of the ways you can target people with your ads on Amazon. And what we're seeing right now is that the vast majority of the time, the sponsored product ads are going to be like way more profitable than the product display ads. So like for sponsored product ads, we might have like a 5% Amazon cost of sales. Um, and so Amazon cost of sales is like this weird thing. So uh, essentially Amazon is the way they report, they have kind of poor reporting for their ads. If you ever done like Facebook ads or Google AdWords, like this is not the same. <laughs> um, it's not nearly as detailed, but their metric they give you is the eventually, essentially like how much, how many clicks you got, how many impressions you got, what was your cost per click? How much did you actually spend? And then what are your estimated total sales? Um, and then uh, they basically take, your estimated total sales and divide that by your ad spend to give you your Amazon cost of sales. So for example, if you're selling an ebook, you know, and you're at 70% royalties, if you have a 70% Amazon cost of sale, that means you're basically breaking even, right? So if the Amazon cost of sale is 70%, you're essentially breaking even. Um, and so with sponsored product ads, you know, we're seeing a lot of good books in the, you know, five to 15% range, right? So the Amazon cost of sale. So that means essentially, you know, for every, um, let's say dollar you spend, you're going to get mm, maybe like a seven X return. So, um, you spend a dollar and you know, you're going to get $7 in royalties. 
Now that's like a really good campaign, right? So not every campaign is going to start out nearly that profitable. Um, but we've seen lots of campaigns get that profitable and stay that profitable. Uh, and so in order to do that, you have to have a really good book. Um, and so what I mean by that is it has to be, you know, obviously well written, professionally edited, but it's really about the branding and the packaging, right? So the thing with, you know, selling books on Amazon or any retailers, it's a retailer, right? So, you know, we think of ourselves as an author, maybe a self publisher, um, but really we're in the retail business, right? So if you think of how books were sold 20 years ago before the internet, you know, you went into a store, a bookstore, which is like a retail establishment, and you had to go find like the area, like the science fiction bookshelf, the, you know, the religious bookshelf, the history bookshelf, right? And you had to go and find your product. Like Amazon works the same way today, right? And so, you know, if you go into a bookstore and you see a book with like a, a, a cover that's just ugly and, you know, it's like this black and white picture or like something just horrible, you're not gonna pick it up off the shelf, right? It's the same way on Amazon. So if you have a book with bad packaging, bad branding, um, you know, you can spend as much money as you want on ads, you're not going to be profitable. And so a lot of times, like before we even go into like doing an ad campaign for our clients, you know, the first thing we're going to do is get their branding really clear. Right. Um, and there's this whole process we go through to do that. But essentially, you know, we're going to go to Amazon's website and we're going to find the best selling books that are related to their book. So, you know, if you're writing like a, you know, galactic empire uh, fantasy science fiction book, then you know, we would go and see all the best selling galactic empire science fiction books on Amazon. And we would take a look and the, one of the first things we'll do is we'll take a look at all their book covers, right? We'll see, you know, what are the similarities between all the book covers? Which are, what are the book covers look like from the books that are selling really, really well? Um, and we'll start to kind of get an idea for what emotions are around that, right? Because the, peop the reason people buy books is, is emotion, right? The reason people buy anything is emotion. So we make purchasing decisions with emotion and we justify it with logic, right? And so, um, so you know, like, this is a great example of this is like movie posters, right? You go to the movie theater and you see the movie poster for like, you know, the new James Bond thriller. And there's like a picture of a beautiful woman with like a gun and there's like explosions in the background and there's a helicopter on fire, right? Like that's, you, you can tell immediately just by looking at the poster that it's like an action thriller. Right, because it's branded, it's got that emotion around it, and so your book cover has to do the same thing, right? So if you have an action adventure thriller novel, and the book cover, you know, it's like pink and it's got you know, uh, you know, fancy italicized font that's hard to read, and there's a picture of a scantily clad woman. It looks like a romance novel. It doesn't look like an action adventure thriller, right? Um, so you want to make sure that your book is really branded for your market. Uh, and so one of the ways you can do that is by researching, you know, books on Amazon um, and checking out what their book covers look like, uh, because that's going to give you a good idea of, okay, you know, what is the emotion the, the cover designer is, is, is communicating through this book cover, right? And then the other things we will have our clients do and that we'll do for them is read all the reviews of these top books on Amazon. So you want to read the positive reviews and the negative reviews and take notes. You know, what do readers love about these books and what do they hate about these books? And you'll get a feeling for, you know, what are the emotions your readers are having? What, what is getting them interested in these books? What is getting them disinterested in these books? And that'll help you figure out your brand as well. So sorry for the long digression, but it's really, really important that you get like the branding right because otherwise it's, it's almost impossible to have a profitable ad campaign if you don't have good branding, right? Um, so back to the ads, um, the sponsored product ads have been performing the best product display, not so much, but, um, we have had some product display ads do really, really well. So you kind of have to get creative with them. So again, you can target either interests, um, on Amazon, which is good to test. So I think if you have a good budget, so if you have like, let's say a $250 budget, I would definitely test every type of ad because you don't know what's going to work until you actually test it. And you can test with a very small budget. It doesn't require a huge investment. Um, and you can set, uh, you know, you can set limits uh, in, in the Amazon ad platform to how much you want to spend. So for sponsored products ads, it's like a daily budget. And for product display ads, it's like a, it's an overall budget for the campaign. So the minimum overall budget for a campaign is $100, but you can always cancel it early. And in my experience, it usually takes several weeks for them to spend $100 in a campaign. So it's not like they're going to spend $100 in a day for you. That has never happened so far in my experience. Um, so that's kind of the basics of it. Um, some good things to do in terms of keyword targeting is target. Obviously, you want to target like keywords related to your book. So you know, if you're doing an alien invasion novel, you, you type in words around alien invasion novel and you know, fantasy alien novel, right? Just think of every kind of keyword combination that you could possibly, 
that a reader could possibly type in to find a book like yours. But other things that you can do as well beyond that is you can go and you can find the best-selling um, books in your in your niche or subgenre on Amazon, and then you can actually target the keywords for those authors, right? So um, you know, if Risa Walker from the Timebound series, uh, if you've got a book related to that. Um, you can target that keyword. So when people type in Risa Walker, they'll see on the bottom of her books, you know, uh, sponsor products related to this item, and they'll see your book right there, right? So if you know people reading that book or reading that author would be interested in your book, you can target those keywords as well. Um, so that's kind of the basics of, of how you get started with it. And so the way that you become successful with ads is that you, you try as much as you can. You just test out everything. Like test out all these wacky ideas um, and in a structured way. Right, and then check back. You know, you know, five days later, check back. So what I do is I check back like every week. So like every Sunday, I'll check back on my campaign to see how that week went. Um, and because the thing with Amazon ads is it's not like Facebook ads where you can literally spend on Facebook like you can spend a hundred thousand dollars in a week easily. Um, and obviously, you can set limits on your campaign, but like there's no way you can spend that much money on Amazon. Like they just won't let you spend more than like I mean, we've never had anything go over like fifty dollars a day for a single campaign. So you can't spend that much money on Amazon because um, they won't let you. But the cool thing is, like, it's super targeted traffic, right? So when you're targeting a keyword for, you know, historical romance novel, like you know, those people are interested in your book because they've either typed that keyword in or they're looking at a book that has that keyword in it, right? So it's kind of like the best, most targeted uh, ad campaign you can possibly get in that sense because you know it's Amazon telling you, yes, these these customers are interested in and what you said they're interested in and what you're targeting them for. So that's kind of the basics of how, how to get started with it. All right, cool. You got a lot of good information in there. I think you made a really good point about probably for this to work, you really do need an awesome cover just because your book has to look more appealing than the book on the page that the people landed on to start with because that's where most of these are showing up is on another book's page. So. Hmm. Uh, that's a good point. And I like your idea about uh, looking at reviews of other books kind of similar to yours to get what people are reading for, the emotion. That That's cool because I know when I go sit down and write the little ad blurb, 200 characters or whatever they give you, I never know what to write. I'm like, uh, it's a... Uh, it's a book and you know, yeah, but that exactly. that's I think that's a good idea to try to appeal to people's emotions and, and figure out what they are looking for in your specific genre. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And so and I mean, the easiest way to, to like, you know, how do you write a good blurb? I mean, you can go read the top 100 blurbs from the top 100 books in your in your market and you can get an idea like you can tell right away. Oh, this is a really good blurb and this blurb is terrible. Right. So, you know, model the one that's really good and and don't don't model the things that 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 turn you off as a reader, right? That, that don't draw you in. Right. And do you feel that for people that maybe aren't uh, specifically in a target category that like like right, cross genre stuff, or they've just they've kind of written the story they want to write, and then they realize, you know, it's kind of hard to market because it doesn't fit in a tidy category. Do you think Amazon ads could be useful for them too? Absolutely. That's such a great question, right? So. That's the cool thing about indie publishing is like you're no longer stuck in this little genre box where you you know you have to write an eighty thousand word fantasy and it has to have these characters to the storyline. Like you can do whatever you want. It's so cool. Um, and so Amazon gets that. Like Amazon is constantly adding new categories for new genres that that indie authors are just kind of creating on the fly. Um, so that's awesome, right? So there's no issue with that whatsoever. Um, like there's no, there's nothing holding you back from writing a cross genre book. Right. And we're actually about to publish about a handful of cross genre books. Um, and so I think though the key with cross genre is that even though you have, let's say like three genres in one, you really want to focus on what is your core branding message for the book. Right. So if, for example, we're working on a book, it, it's historical, it's like a historical romance, fantasy paranormal right it's there's it's like bending all these genres together but when we come up with the marketing campaign for the book the cover design for the book the the message for the book we're not saying it's a historical romance novel with paranormal suspense right elements right like because no one cares right so um so what you want to do is find what is like the core message of your book right and, and who would your core reader be Right, so even though you might be a cross-genre book, um, would readers of historical novels, or readers of fantasy, or readers of romance, or readers of action adventure, like like which of those genres that your book includes, 
which of those are is the most like your book, right? Um, it's very similar with with nonfiction, right? So if you're a nonfiction author and you're writing a book and and you know you're talking about all these different topics or whatever, it doesn't matter. Like like you have to have one element, one theme that you communicate with your book because you can only communicate so much information in a book title and subtitle and in a brief blurb on Amazon, right? You can't tell the world, you know, <laughs> your entire manifesto on the meaning of life in, you know, an Amazon book description. It doesn't doesn't work that way. And so what I try to get our clients to do is get really clear on, you know, how do you want to brand the book, right? And so you can brand a cross genre title as you know, uh, any, any subgenre you want, or as a, as a, maybe a mix, you can do two at most, right? So you can say it's, you know, it's a historical fantasy or something like that, but I wouldn't get into the, you know, mixing several genres in, in your branding because it, it gets really confusing for the reader, right? And there's this great quote in business that the confused mind always says no, right? So if you confuse your readers, they're not going to buy your book, right? So you want to have this kind of crystal clear message. And the, the kind of the issue with that though, is that you will find that, um, you have to get that choice right, right? Get it. So the, the choice that you choose for your brand has to match what's in the book and has to match who your readers are. Because, you know, if you say this book is a, um, you know, is an urban thriller and people read it and they're like, well, I mean, it's kind of an urban thriller, but that's really like, you know, paranormal suspense is really what it is. And right. Then, then, then the, your marketing as an to urban thriller readers, but they're not feeling like it's delivering on the, your marketing promise. Does that make sense? And so you don't want to confuse readers and you want to make sure that your the brand that you finally decide on is true to the core of the story and true to the core of your message. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. And I, I feel like you do kind of have to pick the most appropriate genre in order to appeal to some readers. And, and then hopefully they'll like all the other elements you have in there after they pick up the book. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, for sure. Okay, so I've talked to a few people doing the Amazon ads and, you know, I first tried it when it first came out and then I've come back to it this last few months and had more success. I know early on I tried the keyword targeting that you were mentioning, uh, targeting other authors that were, you know, very similar to what I was writing. And I found that I just couldn't spend any money. It was, uh, it wasn't until I just said, you know what, science fiction and fantasy is my target, you know, did the broader interest that I was able to move the dial. Um, do you feel that have you run into other people with that problem? I know they're kind of evolving and changing, so it might be better now. Uh, what are so your you thoughts on that? Money? Do you mean that Amazon wouldn't let you, like Amazon wasn't um, actually giving you clicks? They weren't actually? I, well, I just wasn't getting enough impressions. You know, right, like exactly. my, I put in $100 and I'm like, oh, wow, I spent $2 in the last three weeks uh, because it was, maybe I was doing too small, too small right. keywords. Uh, and so even when I tried to make it a little broader, more authors that were more popular, it didn't seem to help that much. Uh, so yeah, now I'm just doing the whole genre basically. And that's working pretty well. It, it is, like you said, it's not like Facebook where you can <laughs> go spend a couple thousand dollars like nothing. Uh, you know, yeah. I think it still takes me the whole eight weeks or something to go through like $300 or I don't remember what it is, but right. Yeah. So that's the, the, the question with scaling, right? And so for keyword campaigns, when we have a book that's that's converting well, so in other words, like if, if we our Amazon cost of sales target is let's say 70%, because we only have an ebook, right? And so we know we're gonna get 70% royalties. We know we have to hit 70% to break even. And if we have a campaign at let's say 30%, like how do we scale that? Because we know we're making money on that. So how do we get more clicks, right? And so the way you do that with keywords is you just have to add more keywords, right? Um, and so uh, there's all kinds of cool tools. So you can like Google like a keyword tool. And there's all kind of, we can link some in the show notes. Um, so you can type in like one keyword, like let's say science fiction, and it'll give you like 800 variations on that keyword. And so you can create an entire campaign with just like 800 variations and test that out and see which of those keywords are, are getting you more traffic, which are profitable. Um, so that's one way to do it. And the other way to do it is actually to target what you might think aren't relevant keywords, right? So you can actually target keywords um, and this is more apparent for nonfiction. So like, for example, for nonfiction, um, we've got a, a book on memory. Um, and so we're targeting, uh, ads to like every single book on in business, every single book in education, like we're targeting the random keywords that have nothing to do with memory. Um, but because Amazon is actually like the, the ads are profitable, right? 
So we're just getting more traffic from Amazon because at the end of the day, when you're advertising on Amazon, it's very it's not the same as advertising on Facebook. So when you're advertising on Amazon, that person is one click away from purchasing your book. So they click your ad, they're one click away from purchasing your book, right? Um, and if they're on Amazon platform, they're a reader. So someone might be looking at a nonfiction book and click your ad and actually buy your novel. It, it's definitely possible, right? Um, so think about you know who is your ideal reader, right? Um, and so maybe you're writing in a very tiny subgenre. And maybe you can expand your keywords to a more broad genre, right? So, like you said, you know, targeting all of the science fiction interest, right? Um, even though you have a subgenre within that, you can target a major genre. You can even target partner genres. And like you said, if you have a cross-genre book, you know, you've got three, four genres mixed in your book. You can target each of those different genres with different campaigns and see which ones give you. Uh, see if you can actually get a profitable campaign out of that. And if you can, if you can scale it up with more and more keywords. All right, sounds good. And yeah, I think when I did it, I targeted maybe like 15 authors that were kind of writing and I was trying to do it for my pen name, which is science fiction romance and it's a pretty small little niche. So there weren't that many authors I could think of to target, but yeah, I, I think going broader makes a lot more sense. And that's what I've seen with my other books too, that I've tried it with, it works better. But um, let me let Joe ask a few questions before we uh, <laughs> jump over to some email marketing stuff. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, yeah, uh, one of the questions I've got is uh, Amazon, like a lot of advertisers, uh, let you, I think, bid how much you want to pay, and they give you, you know, a, a, an average of what people are paying. Um, how should you calibrate that sort of payment? Yeah, good question. So you don't want to bid too much um, when you just start out, um, but at the same time, it's hard to spend a lot of money on Amazon. So it really depends on your budget. If you're like a super tight budget and you cannot afford to waste money, then what you want to do is start with really low uh, bids. So like 10 cents per click is a pretty low bid. Um, uh, and so start with that and see you know, how much traffic you get, how many clicks you get. You're not going to get much traffic with a low bid like that, um, but you're more likely to earn a profit because you're spending less per click, right? So if you have you know, at least $250 to spend, you don't really need to worry about that. Um, I would start at like 25 cents or so and just see and target a whole bunch of keywords and just see which, what keywords you can even get traffic for. Because if you have, let's say, a thousand keywords, you know, only 10% of them are actually going to get you traffic, right? The other 90% you're going to get either no impressions or not enough impressions to actually make a difference, right? Um, so that's how I would recommend going about it. 